It's a commonly known fact that the Vulcan people regulate their emotions through a code of logical thought and a strict adherence of near-religious-like philosophy founded by Surak. But why? Hi, all, Rick here with a speculation video on the Vulcans. Vulcans aren't emotionless creatures, they only appear so due to their suppression of this side of their being. They love, hate, find mirth and sadness as many other species do, but simply bury these emotions so deep that they do not impact their daily life at all. In fact, the complete and total suppression of emotions is a state known as the Kolinar and attained by only a few individuals every generation, being known as masters of the trait comparable to attaining a sort of enlightenment for other cultures. To cut away such a fundamental part of life is an extreme reaction to a problem, but for the Vulcans this seems to be a valid reaction. It has been observed that a Vulcan without strict emotional restraint can be friendly, but a complete lack leaves them prone to outbursts of intense emotion, uncontrolled and unrestrained. It is said that this is the way Vulcans used to be before the time of awakening, before they embraced the teachings of Surak, prone to paranoia and hostility, primal even. Their planet had descended into civil war some 1800 years before the Federation and almost nuked itself back to the Stone Age, but they must have been capable of cooperation and rational thought, more so than depicted in legend they possessed advanced technology, not only in their military, nuclear arms and the such, but the Kershara, the very tome that recorded Surak's teachings, was an advanced holographic matrix, power source and emitter of near contemporary levels. To reach such levels of advancement, the species must have been far from the violent near feral state that seems to overcome contemporary Vulcans of the show. The Pom Far seems extreme too every seven years, mate or kill. This is an undeniable facet of their biology caused by a hormonal and neurochemical imbalance. My point is this, perhaps the Vulcans' suppression of their emotions has diametrically led them to have a more extreme temperament over time. Diametrically is a fun word. People are all different, but commonly bottling up rage for a long time causes it to overspill into other facets of life or venting unexpectedly. This could be a similar phenomena with the Vulcan mindset. Eons of a culture that outright finds emotional expression distasteful has led to their emotions becoming so chaotic that they have no option but to suppress, thus creating a cycle. Perhaps this emotional pressure is so extreme that it even led to physical changes, like the Pon Far. What began as perhaps a, simply a fertility cycle worsens to a point where it became life-threatening, mate or die, kill or expire. The emotional release of pent-up aggression triggered by a more mundane hormonal change. Though the violent aspects of the Pon Far have been around for longer than the Awakening, perhaps they've been exacerbated. This point of view is reflected in the factions that opposed Surak's teachings. The Vatosh Kaltur believed that emotions were needed to live a healthy life alongside logic. For the most part, these Vulcans without logic are compassionate and very human in their approach to life, but the Vulcan neurology is so adapted to their emotionless state of being that the violent outbursts are still present meaning that modern Vulcans are at great risk of a regression, and even the Vatosh Kaltur maintain a degree of the logician lifestyle. Perhaps the most compelling evidence for this point of view is in those who marched beneath the raptor's wings. The Romulans were once Vulcans, and despite never embracing the logic-centric visions of Surak, their society evolved at a similar pace to their cousins, even though the species are now two distinct entities. Still guided by paranoia, the Romulans are far from the violent, feral nature of an uninhibited Vulcan, and more notably, they lack any extremes like Pon Far. The fear of dissolving into a culture of barbarianism and war instills the Vulcans with their emotionless philosophy, leading to a culture where the emotional expression is considered distasteful, in fact, there came a point in Vulcan history where 
they not only denied feelings, but another natural born gift, that of telepathy and similar psionic abilities. Even the age old tales of Katras, their spirit, or the preservation of a Vulcan's mind as neural impulses if you prefer, faded into myth and the practice of mind melding became taboo. These abilities were stigmatised further by occurrences of the Pana, a disorder created by improper mind melds that would be transmitted via further melding, but in reality was easily curable by a melder who knew what they were doing. The ostracising of such abilities and those who practised them was tied into the fear of their primal nature worsened over time, as it exposed not only the consciousness, but the boiling subconscious of a repressed emotions. Eventually a time of reformation reintroduced these natural Vulcan gifts entirely while maintaining and even aiding in the pursuit of logical enlightenment, truer to Surak's initial teachings. These reforms were instituted by the Cyrenites. On another note, I think the Romulans themselves may have played a part in the stigmatisation of Vulcan's mental abilities by tying them to the fear of emotional instability, making a point to declare them counter to Surak's teachings and a deviant rarity, all of this despite his initial philosophies incorporating many aspects of Vulcan spirituality and every Vulcan being capable of such feats. After all, it becomes apparent through the events of Enterprise Series 4 that the Romulans have infiltrated the Vulcan High Command with agents for years, thereby keeping the Vulcans' efforts focused away from development and interstellar cooperation using dogmatic procedure. All this was done in secret and had been for many years, so what's their biggest threat within the Vulcan people? A single mind meld with a Romulan informant or agent and all of their machinations would be exposed, so over the years they did all they could to remove these potentially problematic elements. So all in all, I think that the Vulcans were at one time violent and aggressive but not as primal as often described, more like the Romulans really. Surak's teachings led them away from the brink of self-induced annihilation and founded a philosophy of logic using all of the Vulcan's innate abilities. Over time, however, his teachings were interpreted, reinterpreted by numerous factions, until the presiding fear of their culture regressing led them to further retreat from their emotions, generations suppressing their nature leading to Vulcans whose primal nature is never expressed and therefore their logical lifestyle leaves them completely inept at maintaining a healthy emotional balance. This compounds over time until we get to the modern Vulcan whose species' rage is so unchecked now that they have no other choice but to suppress it. Thanks for listening. I guess technically this is a theory as it's never confirmed in canon, just that Vulcan nature is dangerous and needs to be tamed but I find it unlikely they would have got to the point of the awakening in the first place if it had been as bad then as it is now. Thanks again. So let that be a lesson, be true to who you are. Unless you want to nuke everything around you, then don't do that, despite how tempting it may be, please. Look, I, I'm sure there's a lesson in there somewhere, but more importantly, Am I right? Were Vulcans always a psychiatrist's field day? Until next video, thanks for watching. I've been Rick and goodbye.